For those interested in perfumery, here's something kind of fascinating when it comes to natural ingredients. So I have two samples here of essential oils coming from the Immortal Flower. So recently I made two separate orders of materials and I didn't realize that I had already ordered it. It's a mistake I wish I didn't do because for context, just for a 4 milliliter bottle, it's actually like t almost $26 for this, right? So pretty expensive stuff and as a general rule, you know, natural ingredients will always be way more expensive than any synthetic. And also for reference, the immortal flower is this flower here that grows in like really rigid areas. It's uh, it especially grows in Corsica, but you can find it in France, uh, Morocco, and Greece. And it gets its name because you know, in its natural state, it kind of looks dry, uh, but it's yet it's still uh, quite alive. And I'm currently studying its scent signature for a special project. And its scent profile isn't so floral. I would say it's more like medicinal, hay-like, um, like tobacco. Sweet, green, and a little leafy. But what I wanted to show you guys today is, so I made these two different orders at separate times, and look at the color of them. Look at how different that is. One is clearly, clearly like a dark amber, and the other one is just like this golden liquid. And this is the thing with natural ingredients, which I feel makes them really fun, is that um, you never know exactly what you're going to get. They're, it's not always going to be exactly the same. And I did smell them. Uh, I, I didn't notice necessarily a scent profile. I think they're going to open up a little bit more when I do a dilution. So make sure you follow it to see me actually create a dilution of these. Uh, but yeah, that's when you kind of see like the subtleties when you when you start diluting them, in my opinion. So yeah, natural ingredients can differ in so many ways. So although they're the same CAS numbers, so theoretically the same material, uh, they can vary in so many ways depending on the crops, depending on the lot, depending on where this particular immortal uh, essential oil comes from. And all of these things can kind of affect both the color and the scent signature. And there are pluses and minuses to this as a perfumer because often as perfumers we're trying to look for consistencies across our formulation so we would hope that you know one certain batch of our fragrance will be smelling the same as another one because clients are kind of looking for consistencies in our fragrance uh, but there's also something quite magical in the idea that you know maybe our perfumes won't always smell exactly the same because it all depends on the natural ingredients that we put in it and this concept is great for maybe you know smaller houses uh, but not so great for larger brands who are really trying to make everything smell exactly the same across their entire line Larger brands obviously want their products to be as consistent as possible. So, you know, like something that could have even affect the color can be a problem down the line. So, yeah, I just wanted to show that with y'all and make sure to follow to see what I'm going to whip up with these.